I'm a fairly simple person. I find pleasure in the simple things in life. For example, when I've got a new microcontroller board to play with, and that's what's happened today because here I have the new Arduino Nano R4 with a Cortex M4 microcontroller on it. In this video, I wanna tell you all about this board, all the different features that it has. I then wanna show you how you can program it using the Arduino IDE. And along the way, there's a couple of demos showing you how to do some things on the board, mainly with LEDs, because they're simple to get up and running. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's get into this. So at the heart of the Nano R Ford board is the Renesas RA41M1 uh, microcontroller, which is basically a 48 megahertz ARM Cortex M4 CPU core, along with a floating point unit and 256K of flash memory with 32K of SRAM. Now that FP unit is a single precision floating point unit compliant with uh, the relevant standards. It also has a 12-bit uh, DAC, CAN bus for industrial communications, integrated op amplifiers, operational amplifiers, and uh, human interface uh, capabilities, that means uh, mouse and keyboard. So you get a lot of stuff here in a very small package. Let's take a quick flying tour around the board here. So here is the uh, Cortex M4 microcontroller. Uh, here we can see that there is a reset button, very, very handy. And a big thing here, this is an, a USB-C connector. So not micro USB as it has been for so many years on various different microcontrollables. We've now got USB-C here. And there are four LEDs, programmable LEDs on this board, very handy for uh, diagnostics uh, and for kind of communicating what's going on. There's an orange simple on off LED here. And then there is an RGB LED here. So there's actually three of them here, a red one, a green one, and a blue one. And all four of these can be also programmed to uh, have a kind of a dimming effect by using the PWM uh, interface. And at the end here, there is a quick connector, which is really useful because you can connect in, you know, different accessories, temperature monitor, humidity monitor, and so on, just by plugging in without having to build any circuits. And that, of course, works over I squared C. So as I mentioned, there's I squared C, of course, as you'd expect, there's standard serial, there's also SPI, there's those onboard LEDs that I've just mentioned. There's also some real-time clock functionality, and there's actually a way of powering that real-time clock with a battery so that actually it keeps the time uh, even when the board isn't uh, plugged in and doing anything. Of course, it works with everything, standard uh, Arduino libraries, of course, that you should expect, part of the uh, Arduino uh, ecosystem and works out of the box without any fiddling if I do, just pick the right board uh, and that's it. Now, since the R4 uses the same microcontroller as the Uno R4 and the Uno R4 Minimum, I've got a review of the Uno R4 here on this channel. It shares a complete code and library capability, making it easy to translate projects between the boards. So you've got three options now using exactly the same microcontroller and you can just migrate between them very easily. Now here's a bit more of a detailed pinout of what's going on. So here is that uh, real-time clock battery backup, which I mentioned, so you can connect that into there. We'll talk more about some of the voltages uh, in a moment. Of course, there's I squared C functionality, there's the op amp functionality, the DAC functionality, the SPI functionality. And there are different dedicated pins for the primary pins for those. And then of course your normal digital and analog pins for controlling, you know, temperature sensors, servo motors, you know, reading, humidity, whatever. I mean, there's so much uh, there that you can do with all this stuff. So uh, nice uh, nano layout, which is the one of the standard formats for uh, Arduino boards is their nano format and lots and lots of pins. Now the R4 has one USB-C port which is used to PAL the board, to program the board and to send and receive serial communications. Absolutely brilliant. So you just plug it in and basically you plug it in and get to your laptop. The board powers up. You can flash new programs onto it and you can get output and send things to it over the serial using the serial monitor inside of the Arduino uh, straight away. So it's a really, really uh, good. No having to connect up any other kind of serial communications. But do note you should not power the board with more than 5 volts via USB-C because it's only uh, 5 volts, not designed for any greater voltages than that. 
Now, talking of powering the board, the R4 can be powered in several different ways. The USB-C connector, as I just mentioned. There's also a V-in pin, which can take anything from 6 to 21 volts, and that will be internally regulated to 5 volts. So this is absolutely brilliant. You can get up to 21 volts on that, and the regulator just handles uh, all of that, which is very good. And then there is a dedicated 5 volt pin uh, directly connecting a regulated 5 volt source so it doesn't have its own regulation don't put more than 5 volts in there you'll blow the board up so V in obviously is the, the way to go for any other external ones but you, you can put it into 5 volts here if you want to now let's look at those there so there's the USB-C connector here is 5 volts dedicated 5 volts here's the ground here's V in which will take anything up to that 21 volts and there's also a 3.3 volt pin, which is uh, an output pin. So what's that? So the R4 also includes an onboard 3.3 regulator that provides power for the following. For the quick connector, so I squared C over 3.3. I squared C level translation enables communication between 5 volt and 3.3. And then any other internal 3.3 volt peripherals that can be powered through there. So you, it's 5 volts but there is a 3.3 volt uh, availability as well. Okay, so the first demo I want to give you of showing you this working is the Hello World program. Of course, Hello World is the standard way of getting any program to run. If you're writing a C program or a Golang program or a Python program to print out Hello World. When it comes to uh, embedded microcontroller stuff, Hello World becomes, can I flash this LED on and off? Because that means I've been able to write a program, compile it, load it onto the board, and then run it and running it shows the LED going on and off. So that's the first demo I'm going to give you now. Okay, the first thing you need is the Arduino IDE. So go over to arduino.cc, that's the official Arduino website. Go over here to products and then look here, Arduino IDE, integrated development environment. And then you can basically pick your operating system and how you want to install it. Download that and install it just like you would any other software on your platform. Okay, so here I am inside of the Arduino IDE. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you go here to board and make sure you pick Arduino Uno R4 boards and then you pick the Arduino Nano R4. As I said, there are these three boards now in this R4 range with the same microcontroller chip there. If you don't have that, go over to the board manager and then you want to search here for R4. And then that will give you the option here to install the Arduino Uno R4 board uh, package, which supports the uh, uh, Nano R4 as well. I've already got that installed. Then to run that Blink program, you go over to Examples, and then you go over to, here to Basics, and you go to Blink, and that will bring up a new sketch, as they call it, uh, for Arduinos, and it lists it here. And it's a really simple program. So because this is microcontroller programming, you have a setup function that gets run once. In this case, it sets the built-in LED to be an output, uh, which you expect is an LED. Uh, and of course, that's the orange one. And then the loop gets run continuously in a loop. And what we're doing, we're setting it high, waiting a second, setting it low, waiting a second, as simple as that. Now, up here, you need to make sure you've got the Arduino uh, selected. You need to have that board plugged in and connected to your laptop or your computer. And then once you're happy with all of that, you just hit this upload arrow here, which will compile the code and upload it to the board. And once that's been uploaded, here we can look at the board and we can see the LED flashing. And then another demo I'll give you now is how to control this RGB uh, LED. It will get the red to cycle through from nothing to full brightness back down to nothing, then the green one, and then the blue one. So you get all the colors cycling. Note here, the built-in RGB LED on the Nano 4 must be pulled to ground to make it light up. So it's the opposite way to your thing. So that means the voltage is low on each of the pins it will turn on the LED, and when the voltage is high, it will turn it off. So that means it's a bit different than, for example, the orange LED. So this is the other way around, just so you notice that when we dive into the code. Okay, now how to show you to uh, cycle through those different LEDs on the RGB. So the first thing to know is that those pins are called LED R, LED G, and uh, LED B. So they're predefined 
for red, green, blue. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the PWM interface, which means we're actually going to write to the thing using an analog write, not just a binary on off, a digital write on off. And when you're using that interface, it kind of pulses the LED to make it have a certain brightness. It does that automatically inside of the the Arduino there. So what we're doing is we're saying I've got a brightness and I want to write it to a pin. Now we start by setting that pin to the red one and we start at 255, 255 and go down to zero because remember this is the other way around. So we want to go from 255 means it's off and then when you get to zero it's on as I, as I showed you in that earlier slide. So what we do is we basically go through that waiting five milliseconds so it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and then we go from it being fully bright that zero back up to 255 so it then basically goes uh, off then once we've done that we say well if you were already on the red led then change to the green if you're already on the green change to the blue otherwise go back to the red one so this basically means every time this loop goes around here we change to a different led so when you run that the red one will go from off to full bright, from full bright to off. And it'll do the same for the green one. Then it'll do the same for the blue one. And then it'll just keep repeating the cycle. So as before, once you're happy with that, you just go ahead and hit that upload button. And now that's done, we can see that LED cycling through those different colors at different brightnesses, exactly as we programmed. And there you have it, the Arduino Nano R4. Do let me know in the comments below what you think about the board. Will you be getting one? Do you have, like me, a little pile of boards and you want to build up your collection, do some more playing around with it? Love to hear your thoughts. Okay, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Also, please do check out my Patreon page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.